It's moments in the courtroom today where the trial of the men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery is underway. Today, the defense attorney in the case objected to the number of pastors the Arbery family has had in the courtroom. There's only so many pastors they can have. And if that, their pastor's Al Sharpton right now, that's fine. But then that's it. We don't want any more black pastors coming in here or other Jesse Jackson, whoever was in, was in here earlier this week, sitting with the victim's family trying to influence a jury in this case. CBS 46's Haley Mason is live for us in Brunswick tonight. And Haley, we also heard from the owner of the house where Arbery was seen just before the shooting. But hearing from the defense attorney there, in some ways, some inflammatory statements. It was certainly a head turner for most of us, Tracy. That is Kevin Goff, the defense attorney for William Roddy Bryan, saying that he has an issue with the number of African-American pastors and high-profile African-American community members coming to support the Arbery family. The right Reverend Al Sharpton managed to find his way into the back of the courtroom. Defense attorney Kevin Goff making a head turning statement that he didn't want any more black pastors sitting in court with the Arbery family and fear they may influence the jury. Obviously, there's only so many pastors they can have. And if that, their pastor's Al Sharpton right now, that's fine. But then that's it. We don't want any more black pastors coming in here or other Jesse Jackson, whoever was in, was in here earlier this week. I believe that's intimidating and it's an attempt to pressure could be consciously or unconsciously an attempt to, to pressure or influence the jury. Judge Wamsley said Goff didn't notice Sharpton because Sharpton wasn't a distraction. He said he wouldn't be issuing any blanket rulings on this. And I did not hear from anyone that there was any distraction whatsoever. In fact, what I just heard is nobody was even aware that he was in here. At the same time outside on the courthouse steps, notable pastor William Barber II saying this to a crowd in prayer. What we have seen here with the mod is not just murder, it's an act of terrorism. Yep. It's not just dangerous to black people, yes. it's dangerous to the entire country. Oh, come on. Yes. Come on. Meanwhile, inside, jurors got to hear from Larry English, the man who owns the home under construction. They watched English on a taped deposition where he says he started to install cameras at the site after being told these little boys had been playing there. When adults start trespassing, he said he started to call police. The first call was about Arbery. Yeah, I've got a trespasser there, so he's a, a colored guy, got real curly looking hair, he's tattooed down both arms, and, uh, and he's over there kind of wandering around. English next called police on this couple, who he suspected had stolen items from his boat. Defense attorney Bob Rubin pulling up these text messages between English and neighbor Diego Perez. Perez saying, quote, goodness, if you catch someone on your cameras, let me know right away. I can respond in mere seconds. He offers to pen the guy up until the police could arrive. But I didn't ask him to pen him. No, you didn't, but he offered and you were fine with that. And again, we want to note Larry English was communicating with his neighbors through text messages because he lives two hours away and this was just a dream vacation home for him. Uh, nonetheless, we do want to clarify Jesse Jackson was not in court earlier this week, but sources tell me he is expected in the coming days. Reporting live in Glenn County, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. Thank you, Haley.